It's been a while since I did an update in this series, so let's take a look at Phalaenopsis, Buddha's treasure, how the plants are doing, and add a new one. For those who follow me might remember that I potted up 5 plants in a big round pot using sponge cubes as a growing medium. And this is now an empty pot and I lost 4 out of 5 orchids. One I managed to save because it had a side shoot coming and I potted it up last August in tightly packed sphagnum moss and kept it humid, warm and quite damp and placed it out of direct light low in the grow tent. There it recovered and now it's time to see how the roots look like and do a repot. At the top of the pot there are some dead roots, but when taking it out we can see a lot of new, very healthy and nicely growing roots. Now the removal of the sphagnum moss I'm going to speed up because it took me over 30 minutes to carefully remove that really packed and literally stinking moss from out between the roots. I managed to save this orchid by keeping it under humid and warm conditions keeping it moist at all times and keep feeding it as I do with all my orchids. That is, with every watering they get their recommended dose of occurrence rain mix. Now where did I go wrong with the initial setup? Was it the sponge cubes or was it entirely my fault? The idea with the sponge cubes was not to keep the roots too wet. But last summer we had over 5 months of severely hot weather staying day and night indoors around 30 degrees Celsius. That in combination with me not liking to overwater my plants most likely caused the dying off of my orchids. Now I'm going to order some new plants and try this setup again with a twist. You'll see when the plants arrive shortly. After I removed all the moss, I thoroughly sprayed the roots with hydrogen peroxide at 3% and then rinsed the roots to wash off the remaining dead algae. Then I trimmed back the dead roots and the damaged or broken ones. As you can see, the orchid has recovered remarkably and produced a very nice, abundant new root system. The Phalaenopsis Little Emperor Bellioric I bought over 4 weeks ago. It's still a young plant, but it's already producing a flower spike. So let's unpot it and see how its roots are looking like. As usual with these Asian important orchids, it was in such a wonky plastic pot and growing in old packed sphagnum moss. However, the moss comes off quite easily and there even seems to be a nice root system. When the moss was removed, again I sprayed them with hydrogen peroxide, rinsed them off and cleaned the roots up.
Since both orchids were used to growing in moss, I decided to pot them up with moss again, but slightly different. But before we start repotting, a word on the difference between the two commercially sold sphagnum moss varieties. There are two totally different sphagnum moss species on the market. First of all, the cheaper Chilean or Chili moss, here pictured on the left. And there's the New Zealand sphagnum moss, which is more expensive. However, my experience with the Chilean moss is that it disintegrates and breaks down or starts rotting much quicker than the New Zealand sphagnum moss. Also, the strands are always short and cut up. This type of moss I wouldn't recommend to use in potting mixes because you will need to repot your plants at least two to three times a year. When wet, it has a more reddish color, while the New Zealand sphagnum moss is more of a golden yellow. Now, if I don't prefer the Chilean moss, why do I have it? Will I use it to cover up the soil of my bonsai or orchids that like a higher humidity, but it's always only used loosely on top of the growing media, specifically when we have high temperatures and low humidity in summer and my plants are outside? Before starting the repot, I soak my sphagnum moss and split it up in longer and shorter strains. I will be using a large plastic net pot with a smaller upside down net pot to mount the orchid on. Like I do with my Neofinetia, I first cover the outside of the mesh pot with sphagnum moss that is tightly squeezed on. Now because this is a slightly bigger version, I will secure the moss with some cotton wire. Then I place the orchid on the mount and carefully move the roots around the moss ball. Then I cover them with the longer strands of sphagnum moss and again secure it with a cotton thread. And when finished, I place the mount in the bigger mesh pot and put it in the ceramic orchid pot. This way I can always take it out to dunk it in water and the ceramic pot will give it stability but also good aeration of the roots.
For the little emperor I will only use the upside down plastic mesh pot, but the rest of the potting will be the same. Now what type of pots I used to display these orchids. First there's a coppery gold glazed orchid pot made in China and typical for these Asian pots are the big holes in the bottom for good drainage. Now everyone who knows me knows that I like my pots. So the second one is a brown glazed pot made by Frank Muller, a German potter. This one too has a large hole in the bottom. Here are both orchids potted up a day later. We finally had a sunny and dry day so I could film this outside. And here's Buddha's treasure filmed after repotting and a week later. You can see it's doing well and the flower spike is still growing. I did the same for the little emperor and until this day the spikes are still growing and extending. Thanks for watching, if you like my videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. It not only helps the channel, but it inspires me to make more videos. And I hope to see you next time.